Hello all, my name is Tyler. And I'm John. And together we are DeLone Rigging Solutions, or DRS for short. All right, today uh, we're going to take a look at using a capstan winch and some of the things that can come into play uh, in the process of that and uh, uh, some of the ways that it's uh, a really useful tool uh, on a theater grid or a theater uh, locking rail. Uh, first thing to talk about would be this particular winch we have mounted to a handrail directly across from the locking rail. Uh, some theaters that's a good choice, other theaters that doesn't exist. It's also a matter of while the winch and the, and the mounting bracket may be capable of a full thousand pound capacity, your load rating depends on what your handrail is rated for. So any individual theater you might have to have some engineering done to know what you can do from that handrail in this manner. On the use of the winch, it's, it, the basic premise is the friction of the rope and the wraps on the drum. This winch, uh, and really any capstan winch, about four wraps is probably where, where you're looking at. If you use more wraps than that, then it increases the risk of the rope walking. And by walking, I mean it can, it can run and cross over the top of your wraps, which can basically tie a knot and really get you in a mess. Uh, so it's a, it's a balancing act to have enough wraps to have the proper friction, but not to have too many wraps and cause yourself problems. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have this, this winch, uh, which comes from the Thurn Incorporated, has a, a spring-loaded lock on the rope. We could run it in this and one, one hand on the rope and one hand on the lock. Uh, if you have sufficient experience and are comfortable with the load, it's easier to operate with it out of the lock. This defeats one of the safety features, but practically speaking, is not an uncommon thing to do uh, uh, in day-to-day -day operations. And in day-to-day -day operations, we might use it without the lock, but then use the lock to secure it if we're pausing for a few minutes. I'm gonna take it back out of the lock. Now right now, if I need to adjust the height of this piece, say they're assembling something on the ground and they need it to go up or down a little bit, I can let the load slip in just by feeding the tail a little bit and that'll let, allow the load in a very controlled man manner to move down or once I actuate the winch and pull on the tail, then I'll lift the load. In this case, we're, our load is a counterweight arbor. We we're, we're, have a shiv mounted underneath the arbor and a rope up to the bottom of the arbor so that we can, can do it. Um, another uh, uh, load factor would be what rope you're using. Uh, you need to make sure that the rope that you have set up for this purpose is sufficient to the loads that you're doing. I'm going to actuate the winch and So another factor uh, is your line of sight. You need to be able to see, in, in the case of working in a, with the winch uh, on a counterweight system, you need to be able to see the arbor to know that you're not pulling the arbor into the crash bar, and you need to be able to see the load on the batten and what's happening at the batten. If you're not able to see both uh, with an easy turn of the head, then you need a spotter. Having a spotter is a good idea anyway. But if you can't see both, uh, don't have a clear line of sight to both, then it's a, a necessity. All right, so that's the basics. Um, certainly are many applications for this winch uh, in, in the theater, but uh, that's the more, most basic one. Please remember that DeLong Rigging Solutions one-shot train videos are meant as general overviews. Every system is different. Every venue has different procedures. 
All statements made make certain assumptions about systems and venue similarities. Nothing can replace on-site training with a qualified individual. If ever you have a question or concern about rigging, do not hesitate to reach out to us or another qualified vendor in your area.